In this lecture, we will be examining the history of the Timurid dynasty. The Timurids reigned over portions of what is now modern-day Iran, Afghanistan, uh, the nations of Central Asia, parts of Pakistan, Iraq, Turkey, and the Caucasus region of southern Russia throughout much of the 14th and 15th centuries. The Mongol invasion of Central Asia by Genghis Khan is one of the turning points in the history of the region. That era left effects that are still evident into the 21st century. The Mongol subjugation of uh, Central Asia, which occurred between 1219 and 1225 CE, caused extensive changes in the population of the region known as Transoxiana. You can't quite see it on this map, but it is in the area uh, near the Sir Daria and Amo Daria rivers, kind of in the center of this particular map. Mongol rule of Central Asia hastened this process of Turkification because while the warriors of Genghis Khan were led by Mongol generals, they were largely comprised of Turkic clans that had been assimilated into the Mongol armies during the southward and westward movements of Genghis Khan. After the death of Genghis Khan in 1227, the Mongol Empire was divided between the sons of Genghis Khan. Um, over the course of the next century, there was considerable um, rivalry among the descendants of Genghis Khan. Timur, who was also known as Tamerlane, appeared from these struggles in the 14th century as the dominant force in Transoxiana, which you can see here. Is the region that corresponds with parts of modern-day Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. Transoxiana is also centered on the city of Samarkand, which you can see almost dead center in the middle of this map. This is an urban center in Central Asia that has been a major trade and political junction for thousands of years of human history. It was located on uh, one of the major routes of what we earlier discussed that was the Silk Road. Tamerlane envisioned something of a restoration of the Mongol Empire of Genghis Khan. Unlike his predecessors, Tamerlane was also a devout Muslim and referred to himself as the Sword of Islam. His armies were deliberately multi-ethnic and multicultural, and his merit-based system of promotions in the military helped ensure loyal subordinates regardless of ethnic background. Tamerlane, through his conquests, would emerge as the most powerful leader in the Muslim world and arguably at this time in the 14th century, the most powerful leader on the planet. Um, he is generally considered to be a military genius and a brilliant tactician. His armies were feared throughout Asia and Eastern Europe. His military campaigns however, may have led to the deaths of uh, as many as 17 million people. Um, to put it in perspective, that's about 5% of the world population during his efforts to expand his empire. And uh, this even um, makes Genghis Khan look rather um, paltry by comparison. And uh, there was a definite difference between Genghis Khan, who had more of an empire-building uh, motivation, uh, and was quite willing to let people join, um, or at least give them the offer to join rather than be destroyed. And uh, Tamerlane really uh, preferred the military conquest first option and uh, rarely sort of acceded to allow people to voluntarily join up. This is an image of a... Uh, Actually, it's a, a rather poor image of a sculpture of Tamerlane. Uh, his name was derived from a Persian Timur Ilang, which you can see is the first uh, morphing of his name. Timur the Lame is the name used by Europeans during the 16th century. There's some debate over whether Tamerlane had some form of physical disability. Um, a Soviet forensic anthropologist in the 1940s exhumed his body and argued that Tamerlane had some sort of hip defect, but scholars today are not in complete agreement over that. 
Uh, for his time, though, we know that uh, Tamerlane was quite tall and, and broad-shouldered. His Turkic name is Timur, T-I-M-U-R, which translates as iron, and this likely reflects, if we're going to keep the metaphor going, uh, Tamerlane's iron will and his steely resolve. The armies of Tamerlane crossed Eurasia from Delhi to Moscow, from the Tian Shan Mountains of Central Asia to the Taurus Mountains in modern-day Turkey. From 1370 until his death in 1405, Tamerlane put together a dominant empire, and he emerged as the last of the great nomadic rulers. And there's probably a good reason in terms of uh, technology that Tamerlane was the last, and it probably has much to do with the advent of uh, firearms, because uh, it kind of... Uh, is, is an equalizer of sorts against great cavalry forces like those assembled by Genghis Khan and uh, Tamerlane. Tamerlane initiated a period of mercantile and intellectual growth in Transoxania, bringing to the capital Samarkand dozens of artisans and scholars from the lands he had conquered. Tamerlane was something of a patron of the sciences and the arts. The image on this slide is a 15th century portrait of Tamerlane. This is probably a copy of an earlier portrait um, in his lifetime and is likely the closest we will ever get to knowing what Tamerlane really looked like. You can see he has um, somewhat Mongol or Turkic looking features, the higher cheekbones, and certainly the dress is in keeping with what would be expected for that time period. Uh, Tamerlane's grandson, Ulug Beg, U-L-U-G-H-B-E-G, -E was one of the world's uh, first renowned astronomers. Later in this presentation we will discuss the observatory that he built. It was during the Timurid dynasty that Turkish, the in the form of the Chagatai dialect, C-H-A-G-H-A-T-A-I, became a literary language in Transoxania. Though the Timurids also promoted writing in Farsi, F-A-R-S-I, the language of Persia. You can also just use Persian if you prefer that sort of the westernized version of the language. Um, interestingly, one legend suggests that Tamerlane's court calligrapher uh, managed to transcribe the Quran using letters so tiny that the entire text of the Quran was condensed on the face of the royal signet ring. So one of those uh, rings with the slightly larger face that are used for seals, a signet ring, S-I-G-N-E-T. Uh, here we have pictures of the Gur-e-Amir mausoleum. Gur-e-Amir translates from Persian as simply put, Tomb of the King. This architectural complex contains the tombs of Tamerlane, um, his sons and his grandsons. And uh, also in a place of honor in the mausoleum is Tamerlane's childhood teacher. The Gur-e-Amir was a precursor and a source of inspiration for later Islamic leaders. And the mausoleum had significant influence, in particular, on the design and construction of the Taj Mahal. Here we have an image of the Ulug Beg Observatory. The image de depicts the observatory built by Ulug Beg in 1428-1429. The observatory is about 130 feet in diameter and approximately 100 feet in height. In the main hall, you can see people about to walk into the main hall in the image, uh, were instruments positioned for observations of the sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars. Uh, interestingly, Begg calculated the length of the tropical year more accurately than Copernicus, and he also estimated the Earth's axial tilt at 23.5 degrees, which remains uh, uh, the most precise historical measurement of the Earth's tilt. And it corresponds exactly to the figure used by scientists today, which is, you know, pretty impressive. Or just lucky, who knows. Unfortunately, the observatory was demolished by religious zealots in 1449 and only rediscovered in 1908. It's been rebuilt um, according to the original drawings. Um, but uh, sometimes science does run into problems with uh, religious authorities. And uh, this brings to a close our brief examination of the Timurid dynasty.